Hey everybody, it's Chris back with another video. So, as you may have remembered from another video that I recently did, I recently got a new rendering PC. And with that, I've been doing a lot of tests in Blender Cycles, trying to make sure that my renders have low render times and the best possible results in order to put out the best animations I possibly can. So with that, I've realized that something that takes up a whole lot of time is subsurface scattering on character skin shaders. And because of that, I decided to come up with my own skin shader nodes to create a similar effect to subsurface scattering in less time and with less noise. So here's what I have here. This is the Emily 3D scan that I found online for free with my fake subsurface scattering material on it. Now the subsurface scattering I have is not by any means real or accurate or photorealistic subsurface scattering. It's like an approximation, um, basically made with a bunch of fakery and nodes. <laughs> um, just trying to figure out how I can get a similar looking result in less time. So yeah, this is my render here, and as you can see, for this full 1080p render, it took about 19 seconds to render this very dense model. I would say that's a substantial uh, difference from this one here, which is the real subsurface scattering. Using the principled shader with the subsurface scattering turned on, and it took 58 seconds to render. Now as you can see, the real subsurface scattering does look a bit better and more realistic, but for that much render time increase, and especially considering I get these weird artifacts around different parts of the face, like in the eye here, still don't know why that is by the way, I'm not willing to take that chance on hundreds upon hundreds of frames. So this is the one I'm going to be going with for that. Now, like I said, this is not by any means realistic or accurate or anything like that. It's basically just an approximation. So that doesn't matter much, however, when it comes to cartoons like this one. This is a still from the Christmas short I did a couple weeks ago, and as you can see, this is the fake subsurface scattering shader applied to the character. I applied it in the eyes, the skin, the tongue, and the teeth, and as you can see, it's a pretty clear image. Now, um, this is actually an image that I made with the denoising turned off in Blender. As you may know, Blender Cycles has a denoiser built in. I didn't use that for this strictly to show the results of the test. And so you can see the noise difference. So this is straight out of the renderer at, a, at I believe, 100 samples. So, got that one. Now here is the real subsurface. And in this case, you can hardly see a difference, except that there, there's a lot more noise in the parts that are supposed to have subsurface gathering, such as the skin, the tongue. The eyes and the teeth don't really see it that much, but that's probably because they're white. But yeah, this is the real subsurface gathering. Fake, real, fake real fake real big difference now for some reason um the render time is actually longer for the one with less noise for this one i'm not really sure why that is because all the settings are exactly the same and this actually doesn't use the subsurface scatter at all but i believe if you switch over to branch path tracing uh, then that will even out the render times a little bit more and possibly make this one even faster. And that's what I generally use for my renders, given the advice that I suggested in the how to reduce your render times video I did a while back. So anyway, let's go into Blender and just take a look at the nodes that I have set up. So these are the nodes that I came up with. Um, these are going to be shared um, in the description. There's links to the node setup right in the description. This is just the Suzanne head basically with the shader turned on. Um, so I've got a couple different sliders in here. I'm not really going to show what happens under the hood. If you want to, you can figure it out for yourself by just clicking on the node after you download it, hitting tab, and taking a look at everything that's in there. I tried to label everything to the best of my ability so you can understand it. And um, basically, this is just a, an interface to keep it simple so you can use it more effectively. So we've got the diffuse right here. That's basically just the color. As I'm sure you're familiar with, if you've been in Blender for a while, set it to green, set it to blue, set it to yellow, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can set it back to default. I don't know why I set that to default. I was hoping it would set it back to this. Anyway, you can do the roughness. Basically, under the hood is a principled shader, so it works the exact same way. It plugs right into there. So, no roughness. You get a shiny model. Let me turn off the displacement, which I also made, just so you can see it. Really shiny. A lot of roughness. Um... Uh, Hardly any shine, middle ground, middle shine. Let me turn this back on. All right, so uh, now we have the SSS map. Now this is an important part because this is where you designate the areas that are more translucent than others. So let me go back here and you can see it right here. 
basically I just did vertex colors and I painted everything black except for the areas I want to be most translucent, which are the nose and the ears. Turned on symmetry for that, just keep things simple and blurred out the vertex colors a bit. Plug that right into this SSS map and it lights up that part more than anything else. SSS mount, that basically just controls how much scattering effect there is. One is like that, that's the full effect. Zero is obviously none. 0.5 is in the middle. I think you get the idea. Subsurface scattering color. You can change it to things like that. You make it blue scattering, green scattering. You can make it yellow scattering, stuff like that. Or you can just set it back to red. And then the spec map, that basically works the exact same way it wouldn't the principal shader because that's what it's connected to. Uh, it's set to white by default. So um, basically that just treats everything like it's the same amount of shininess. Changes to black, takes out all the shine altogether. But if you want, you can plug in an image just to give more detail to the amount of shininess. Let me just demo it with the roughness all the way down just so you can see the difference. Yeah, so it's set to white by default. And then something that I think gives it a little extra um, effect is the outer shading color, which basically just uses the layer weight node to wrap a certain color around the whole model, like the edges. So like this, we get a little bit of a black halo around it, gives us some more depth. If you want it to be as close to cycles as possible, you're gonna to wanna to turn this all the way to white. But yeah, that's basically the idea. You can play around with this. Like I said, link's gonna be in the description for the download. Oh, I almost forgot. I also made this here, this uh, procedural skin displacement, uh, makes things a little bit easier when you are messing around making characters and stuff like that. So let me set this back to the way it was before, just so you can see, turn this down, that's close enough. Okay, so um, basically this just creates some noise texture and displaces the mesh a little bit just so you can get some pores and skin details stuff like that it looks like that when you zoom in if you turn it all the way down it turns it off or you can just leave it unconnected if you don't want it and then turn it all the way up looks like this you get really fine details for pores simulation of pores and then um you get some heavy bump just to make the skin a little bit rougher so yeah, that actually works best on more realistic characters, like the Emily head that I showed you earlier. But if you're doing cartoon characters, I suggest anywhere between like 0 0.3, sorry, 0 0.2 and zero, just because it it just makes it look more normal. I believe for the um the Christmas one, I had it just set to zero, or something close to it. So yeah, that's basically the whole thing. Notes are going to be in the description. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot to mention that I also have. A similar node group for the eyes. It's called fake SSS eye white. Basically, it's the same thing as this. Hang on a second. It's the same thing as this, except it doesn't have the outer shading color because it's kind of unnecessary for eyes. And then everything's set to different colors, but it does basically the same thing. It controls these eyes here, and it's the same setup that I used in the Emily demo and the cartoon Christmas demo. So I used that same eye shader here and here so just wanted to make sure i didn't leave that out thanks for watching and see you in the next one